All right, so I thought it'd be fun to test out what it would be like to have a robo-taxi. Is Tesla ready for robo-taxi? Well, let's emulate this. Obviously, robo-taxi is not available, but what I have on my phone is the Tesla app, and I'm just asking it to take me to the Home Depot. I'm leaving an appointment. I'm gonna send that to a car, and that car is going to arrive and come pick me up. And so a robo-taxi should be able to come get me, you know, from basically anywhere, and I'll be able to get into it when it's ready. When that car arrives, it should have the destination set, kind of like an Uber. You say, I need to go to the airport, and an Uber driver comes and picks you up. Well, that's what we want from a robo-taxi. We want the robo-taxi to know where you're going to go and be able to take you there safely. Is FSD 12 there? Are we close? Do we know when it will be ready? Nah. I don't even think Elon knows that. My ride's here. Okay, so my ride arrived and navigation's already set. We're going to the Home Depot. It's gonna take 15, 16 minutes. It's five and a half miles away. Can FSD 12 act as a robo taxi? If I get in the car after it came and picked me up, can I rely on FSD 12 to get me there safely? So to find out, obviously, I, as a passenger in a robo-taxi, probably wouldn't be sitting behind the wheel. I'd be in the back seat. But now with FSD 12 4.3, when FSD is active, there's a little green dot that is watching me from my camera and saying I am being safe and, and watching my surroundings and not playing on my phone, not playing on the screen, not looking at the screen. I'm watching the surroundings. And as long as that happens, there's a green light and the car is doing everything. I don't have to use the steering wheel or the pedals at all. I mean, obviously, again, it's still called FSD supervised. I need to be able to take over at any point. But can this work? Can it get me from I'm standing on the curb to where I need to go? So let's try. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the button and see what happens. But first, I actually got to turn that AC back on. It is very hot outside. So it might be a little bit loud on the fan. I'll try and turn that down. Uh, but I do need the AC. So here we go. Got it. Immediately sets off. Puts on a turn signal, and it's finding its way out of our parking lot. This parking lot's not mapped. I've had some issues with unmapped parking lots in the past. We're going to have to creep up to get past this sign and this bush. Now it's clear, and it should be able to just go. All right. Now, I am going to keep my hands off the, the wheel and my feet off the pedal as much as I possibly can. If I need to take over for an emergency, I absolutely will. And I also probably won't allow the car to do anything that's awkward in front of other drivers. Uh, I don't like to impede other people on their day because I'm testing FSD. That's a very unsure turn there. It's, a, it's an awkward intersection, but it's a very unsure turn from FSD there. Uh, there's nobody behind me, so I let it do whatever it was going to do, but uh, I would have been much quicker through there. But again, we're asking this, is this a robo-taxi? Would I be comfortable sitting in the back seat while it's, dri while it's driving like this? So far, very smooth. You know, that was unsure of itself, but still smooth. The acceleration is very nice. The deceleration is very nice. That turn was perfect. All right, turn signal on very early, which I like. And a little bit of a blockage from the left-hand side. There's a bunch of signs and bushes. We're going to have to, to sneak up. They can see the road now, and it could have gone. This car that's approaching us is in the other lane, but we actually do need to get in that lane eventually. So I guess it was just erring on the side that it knew that it eventually needs to turn into that left lane. Acceleration was perfect there. So far, I would be 100% comfortable sitting in the back seat as this drove me to Home Depot. And it was a brief pay attention to the road uh, warning as I had flipped through the cards down here. 
It's very quick. If I'm staring at the screen while it's driving, like right now I'm staring at the screen and we're at a stoplight, it's fine. It doesn't mind that. You're allowed to look at the screen when you're not moving. But it's very, very quick to say, pay attention to the road if you are moving and you're looking at the screen. I mean, I could I can pick up my phone right now and, and touch my phone, and it's fine with that. It does not like when you are moving. All right, so we have a, a green unprotected left here, so we're going to be waiting. Um, looking around this guy in front of me, and there's quite a few cars, so I might fast forward. All right, we got an unprotected left. It's clear, and we go. Not bad, not bad. Again, would have been very comfortable with that as a, as a passenger. Uh, there was plenty of room for it to make the maneuver and it did it, it, did it with a, a decent speed. And the acceleration is always fantastic. Unsure of this person standing by the mailbox. So far, incredibly smooth, no discomfort whatsoever. I was wondering if it was going to move away from that, whatever that was in the road. It didn't seem to register. <clears throat> Slowing down for this person turning into the baseball field. All right. And smooth acceleration out of that maneuver. Very well handled. Extremely comfortable. Again, I could happily be in the back seat letting the car do this. And we're going to be making a left hand turn here. And so far, I'm extremely impressed with the smoothness um, of the acceleration and the braking. Uh, 1236 had some really tough yellow light uh, deceleration instances, which were really, really uncomfortable. Uh, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't say they were human like. It was more. Uh, emergency braking than standard um, yellow light interactions. And it's very slow on these last two turns. It's being very cautious in this downtown area. Maneuvered over to the right a little bit to give that truck a little bit more room. I don't think it remembered which vehicle that person had gotten into. I've seen in the past where it would actually highlight a vehicle that a person gets into. And this car is parked awkwardly right at the stoplight, which is actually illegal. get the green light and it immediately goes through no hesitation we have a yield here there's no traffic coming it merges right onto the main road and then we should start accelerating that perfectly handled now does FSD 1243 recognize route 40 as the speed limit yes it does so on the right hand side was the route 40 speed uh, I mean route 40 sign it recognized it as a speed limit for a moment now it's going back to a 25 um, I've seen this in many uh, areas where the route signs are being uh, confused for the speed limit signs. And that's not, that's not good, especially when you start looking at um, either high, high 
high numbers for a route sign, like, you know, if it was like a route 60 or something like that, or if it were uh, a slow one, I've seen in, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, it recognized route 15 as the speed limit where it's 30 miles an hour. So it's definitely not a good thing. On the auto setting, it should still try and keep up with traffic though. So hopefully it doesn't create too many issues. They just need to fix the speed limit sign recognition algorithms. It did not freak out when that guy started to cross the road. It recognized that there was more than enough room for the car to make it through. going really slow right now for some reason. Um, again, the speed limit is recognized as 40, which it's not 40, it's 25. Uh, we were going really slow through that intersection. I'm not sure why. Okay, so there's a fire truck coming, so we're going to have to stop. Or air unit. Oh boy, well, that's even worse. Okay. Yeah, it started moving to the right there for some reason. It, it got back over towards the center, which was nice. This car is coming over to the lane. All right. The car handled that just fine. I just didn't want to get rear-ended, so I moved my foot just in case I needed to. So far, very, very comfortable. A couple slow maneuvers through intersections. Uh, nothing that's, um, you know, a, a showstopper, but, you know, room for improvement, which is fine. You know, we, we have many, many versions to go before FSD is, you know, ready, so to speak. Changing lanes out of the, uh, the right lane to get around these slower moving traffic. It's an interesting maneuver through there. It's never really done that. Usually just stays in the right lane on this road. I was fully expecting for it to slow down behind that truck, which is what it would normally have done in its past behaviors. Now the person in front of us is slowing down. Okay, we need to keep up with traffic. Okay, it's accelerating. I think that truck in the next lane over was confusing it quite a bit because he was rolling the speed uh, his speed was up and down erratically he actually came to a stop on the curb back there all right so recognizing the traffic behind us is pushing so we're actually speeding up oh it also recognized the speed limit again as 40 which it is not it's 25. It doesn't turn to 40 until this intersection after this intersection We're still at 25 through this intersection. The 40 speed limit isn't until you hit right up here. So we should be getting into the right lane because we're going to be turning right off of this road. Now it's recognized the speed limit is 60, which it is not. It is 40. From that sign to this light, it's 40. And then it goes to 55. I'm not sure what's going on with the speed limit sign recognition, but it is very, very buggy right now. Okay, getting in behind this truck, not the maneuver I would have done. Um, I would have passed the truck and, and then gotten into the right lane. Uh, we've slowed down considerably. But again, as a robo taxi, is this good? Yeah, I've done Nothing. All right. So we're going to be turning into the right lane to make our maneuver into the shopping center area. All right. Turn signal should be on right now. There we go.
going a little slow, but you know, still staying with traffic for the most part. This light here, sometimes the, the car will have, hesitate on FSD because we do have a red light, but we also have our very own dedicated yield lane. So we should continue to roll through, which we do very slowly, but we do. Now let's see which entrance to the shopping center it decides to use. Uh, I've actually never used FSD to come here. So I'm very curious to see, obviously it doesn't have um, you know, parking lot uh, handling as a feature just yet. FSD still is mainly used for, you know, surface streets and highways. Many parking lots are mapped. Uh, as you can see on my map here, these are not. So uh, it's probably, oh, no, we don't want to do that. Okay, good, it fixed itself. It's probably just going to pull into the parking lot. Oh, it does have a, um, a destination line there. So maybe that part of the parking lot is mapped but it's probably just gonna pull in there, get confused, and then uh, be really awkward. We have the warning for looking at the screen for too long. So we're gonna be making a left-hand turn here at this light. Turn signal on, please. Okay. It was smooth, but it was a little awkward getting into the lane. As a human, I wouldn't have done what it did there. Okay, so it was very confused by this that's a concrete line, not a painted line. The painted line is actually right where we're sitting. So it's seeing the, con uh, the painted line for the other lane and then a concrete line. And I can feel it accelerating every once in a while here. It's moving forward ever so slightly. See, now it's moving forward. We're going to stop that because it's, it's thinking that it can go right there. I'm going to give it the, the go because we have the, the green light. It was very confused by the, the markings on the road there, so I stopped it from moving forward. All right, we have the right of way. We're gonna turn left here. And then it seems like it wants to turn in immediately right here. And it's, it looks like it wants to go all the way up to the front of the store. So let's see what it does. If I'm sitting in the back seat, Aside from that confusion at the light with the, the, line, the, the, the ground markings, uh, would I have been comfortable with this drive? And I think the answer is yes. It moves over for this person. That was very natural, very well done. All right. And it's going to move. I think it's going to go all the way up to the curb. And will it actually stop? There's no one behind us. Okay, there's a person crossing the street. All right, I took over there because I wasn't sure what it was going to do. But now I'm going to see what it decides to do in the parking lot. What, what, what are you doing? Are you going to park? Or are you going to... Because it looks like it's going to do a loop. It's got its turn signal to the left on. So obviously, parking lot situation, not great. It's not programmed for that. But it, let's say in the future, it does have the ability to drop you at the, um, at the front door. Now this person behind me is going to be confused as I'm backing into a parking space. That's fine. They can wait for a moment. Um, so the... The fact that we were able to get here, you know, comfortably, we didn't have any any major safety situations. I did take over at this intersection because it was confused by the line mark, the lane markings and the ground. There was a lot of paint on the ground, and it looked like the the stop line was further up than it actually was. We were actually at the proper stop line, and then it tried to move up to the improper one. And then here, right when we got to our destination, I've seen in other videos where it gets kind of confused when you reach your destination. So I, I'm going to chalk that up to destination issues. Again, it is not robo taxi ready, but is it comfortable enough to be a robo taxi when it is? And I think with hardware for cameras, especially the the difference between what I have on this car as as a camera versus what's on my Cybertruck, the quality is night and day. Um, when I'm backing into my garage in the truck, I can see absolutely everything clear as day. In this vehicle, it's almost impossible to see what's going on behind me at night. 
it is a huge difference. So when FSD runs natively on hardware for vehicles with the new cameras, and especially the Cybertruck and the upcoming Model Y with the front bumper camera, that should make a massive difference. We should get much more data and be able to interact better with the, with our surroundings. So will RoboTaxi on hardware four or even hardware five be able to do what we just did without any issue? I think so. It was extremely comfortable, very smooth, and we got here safely. So I think that that's, uh, you know, it's obviously not ready today, but it's very, very close. And I think that with the upcoming hardware um, changes. I mean, Hardware 4 has been out in the wild, but it's running Hardware 3 emulation mode. So you're not actually getting the full advantage of it just yet. But once Hardware 4 is unleashed and once vehicles like the Cybertruck and the upcoming Model Y refresh with the extra camera, once those things are on the road, I think that you'll see the capabilities that will enable RoboTaxi to be a success. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this video done. I appreciate you watching. Ask any questions, you know, make any criticisms, comments, whatever. Um, I try and be as active as I can be. I really appreciate the, uh, the viewing. I really appreciate the interaction. And uh, hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.